for the friends. Hallelujah. I ask that you would turn in your Bibles to Lamentations, the book that's found right after Jeremiah. And we're going to look at the third chapter. And this passage of scripture is also listed in the bulletin beginning with verse 18. Lamentations. 18 through 24, the third chapter. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember my affliction and roaming, the wormwood and the gall. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great it is for faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. I want to use as a subject this afternoon, praise your way through. Praise your way through. God, for your glory, I ask that you would please forgive me of my sins, forgive us of our sins, and clean us, oh God, clean hearts, and want us about the Spirit, God, to speak to us on this day, because we need to hear a word from you. Touch our hearts, God, and we say thank you for hear this prayer, for your glory, God, for your glory, hear this prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise your way through. As your pastor, as a pastor, it is, it is very important for me to know what's going on in our society and in our world for me to be an effective leader with a congregation to guide, to nurture, and to encourage. I would love to be able to stay focused on the church and the ministry of the church without having to worry about the outside scenarios that we face. I would love just to be able to stay focused on ministry, 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 ministry. The Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. It would be great if I was in, able to do that. It would be great if I could say to you Sunday after Sunday after Sunday on a consistent basis that everything is fine. It would be great if I were able, if I'm able to stand up and say we don't have any immigration problems. It would be great for me to say that we don't have any racist problems. If I'm able to stand and say there are no economic, economic problems and there were no sexual abuse, abuse problems, no racist problems, no poverty problems, it'll be great Sunday morning after Sunday after Sunday to just talk about saying to you that everything is fine. I wouldn't have to talk to you about homelessness Problems. I would not have to talk to you about drug problems. And we are living in a day and time where people haven't realized that being addicted to drugs is more than hash, cocaine, heroin, and marijuana. Over the last seven years, over 
72 billion opioid pills have been distributed to people in this country. And we have folk who are addicted by pills, who are drug addicts by pills. I wish I didn't have to say that on Sunday. I would be glad to be able to say there are no gambling problems, though the mayor Lightfoot wants gambling to come into our city. I'd like to, like to tell you that there are no problems, but there are some things that are out there that people they end up losing their job because they lost money. They're trying to replenish their money that they lost and they end up going back to work later and later and eventually getting fired from their job because they're there trying to make money and they're losing money. I, I wish I could say that there were no problems like that. I, I, I wish I could get up Sunday after Sunday to say to you that there are no police brutality problems. I'd be glad to say that there are no black or black crime problems, that there are no white collar crime problems. The list goes on and on and on. I wish I could say that Sunday after Sunday, to say that everything is just spooky dokey, that everything is just fine. But as a pastor, I have to open my eyes to what it is that's in our world. And we got to know that there's more than. Um, is that guy named A S A S A P? ASAP? Who's been uh, locked up in Sweden? And I hope that you recognize that there's more in the world than uh, the concern with ASAP of being arrested and not being released in the country of Sweden. Uh, I, I wish they didn't have to, you know, I wish I could just say everything is right. Everybody's treating everybody in the world. But, as a pastor, I, I find myself having to look at the news. I, I find myself having to uh, read the news. I, I find myself challenged by the news because I want to be able to stand before you with an intelligent uh, presentation that you will appreciate our journey that we're on. Perhaps you were aware of the racist treatment tweets that President Trump revealed on his Twitter account. Though he said he was not a racist, his words suggested the opposite. When there was an uproar against what he wrote, wrote he again repeated that he was not a racist and the tweet was not a racial. I thank God for Congressman John Lewis, who spoke up when on Wednesday Congress was preparing a resolution to condemn President Trump's actions on last Tuesday. He said, and I quote, I know racism when I see it. I know racism when I feel it and at the highest level of government, there is no room for racism. It sows the seeds of violence and destroys the hopes and dreams of people. The world is watching. They are shocked and dismayed because it seems we have lost our way. As a nation, as a proud, great people, we are on Congress and we are here to serve one house, the American House, the American people. He goes on to say some of us have been victims of the stain, the pain, the hurt of racism. In the 50s and during the 60s, segregationists told us to go back when we protested for our rights. They told ministers, priests, rabbis, and nuns to go back. I'm going to give feedback for you. Just a little bit. They told innocent little children seeking just equal education to go back. With this vote, we're talking about the resolution, we stand with our sisters. We were born in America and one 
came here looking for a better life. The four, affectionately known as the Squad, Alexandria, Ocasio Cortez of New York, the Han Omar of Minnesota, Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, and Rashada Talib of Michigan. These four women were attacked by the tweets of our president. And so John Lewis said with this vote, talking about this resolution, we meet our moral obligation to condemn hate, racism, and bigotry in every form. Now y'all looking at me like y'all didn't know this. Are you all aware of what's been going on this week? And with the effort of Congress, our president stoked the flames Thursday at his rally in Greenville, North Carolina, admiring the chant of Senator Beck, though stating he did not say it. He said he addressed it immediately, but when he showed the letter of the at least 13 seconds, the president stood there. As they said, Senator Beck. He stood there before saying anything, and then he wants to say, well, I didn't say it. He just said it was a patriotic crowd, and that he was not particularly happy with the chant. They love the USA. Now, what led up to the chant? That's, that, that's, that's, we need to explore that. What, what led up to the chant of sin for back? This is what the president said. Omar blamed the United States for the crisis in Venezuela. I mean, think of that one. And she looks down with contempt on hardworking Americans, saying that ignorance is pervasive in many parts of this country. Now, let me just stop there. That's true. <laughs> we got a lot of ignorant folks in this country who say the black folk go back and black folk were brought here to this country. Native Americans are the original folk of this country and those who are lighter than we are, white folk, came from Europe to this country. If anybody has a right to say to anybody go back, it's the Native Americans who can say, y'all go back. goes on to say that obviously, importantly, Omar has a history of launching vicious anti-Semitic screens and the crowd said, send her back. I've been to Israel. I've been in Palestine. I have seen with my own eyes the injustices that are there. The United States government sends over the last 10 years over $30 billion to support the Israeli military. But I've seen with my own eyes how people are treated differently. There's something wrong, y'all, when there are resolutions in the land that say don't build Israel, but they're building, taking land by land and land, more land that belongs to the Palestinian people. If you go into Jerusalem, you will see Jerusalem looking real good. They have their metro trays and everything is all polished up. But on the Palestinian side, nothing like that at all. Uh, to give you an example, you would say the Jerusalem side, you may find a four-lane highway. But the Palestinian side is just two lanes. During the summertime when water is needed for air conditioning, etc., we find that the people of Israel have cut the water levels for the Palestinian government to a lower level so that the water can go to those who are in Israel with their settlements. During while I was there, the Gaza Strip, we were not allowed to, to, to go to the Gaza Strip, but while we were there, we were informed that the Palestinian people there might have four hours of electricity from 6 to 10 a.m. Or 
and they have electricity from 3 to 7 in the afternoon. Or they may have electricity from 12 to 4 a.m. Injustices are going on in that region. Look at the conflict, military, army, and tanks, and Palestinians with rocks and motor cocktails and the vast difference. I'm walking the Palestinian area and I can see the, uh, the, 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 the uh, shells of, 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 of the ammunition used. Just walking down the street. I, I'm walking down the street and a person, not in uniform, carrying his automatic weapon on his shoulders, just walking by. There's some stuff that's going on that we as a people in this country have no idea what's going on. I want you to know that there are things that are not right in this world. And as your pastor, I just cannot let you think that everything is rosy. There are some problems in the world where people are not being treated fairly. In this government, in our nation, there are people who are not being treated fairly. If you're black, and you smoke crack, you'll get five years. You'll get ten years. But if your wife is having cocaine or some other drugs, you might get a slap on the wrist. I'm talking about some injustices out of here. I would love to say that's not true, but when we listen to our president and when we look at the society in which we live, there are some concerns I have to be able to address as your pastor. There's bitterness. You look at me, you look, I'm doing, look, I'm doing well, but, but there are some things that I 
say to you? Learn to praise God as you go through. Learn to praise God when you don't understand. Praise your way through when challenging situations arise in your life. Praise your way through when it seems as though the world has turned their back on you. Praise your way through because it gets rough out here, but you gotta learn how to praise your way through. And this is where the joy of the text is. Jeremiah, after all he was going through, he said, this I be called to my mind. There's something that is flickering in my spirit. Therefore, I have hope. Though through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. If you just think about what God has done for your foreparents,
you have a seat.